Eternals. This is the 26th film, I believe, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it is a watershed film, but not really for the right reasons. It's the first film that Marvel has made since they started making movies back in 2008 with the original Iron Man that has been negatively received by critics. It currently has, as of the time of this recording, a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I think is about 17% lower than the second lowest rated film in the MCU. And before I get into what I thought about this movie, I have to say that's incredible. Regardless of what I think about this film, the fact that Marvel, 26 films, 20 something films into their development, almost 14 years into this process, has just now had a critical dud, just shows how good, how honest, and how consistent they've been with their filmmaking over the last decade and a half. I was not looking forward to this movie. The, the critical reception had something to do with that. But really, I just found the trailers uh, to be very off-putting. Uh, the movie is directed by Chloe Zhao, who just won an Academy Award for her film Nomadland, a movie that didn't do a whole lot for me, though I acknowledge it was, it was well-made and it was really well-directed. Now, I'll say this. I found myself, for the first part of this movie, kind of digging it. And I was surprised that it was getting the, the, the critical reception that it was getting. Uh, this movie looks great. Chloe Zhao has such an amazing eye for visual storytelling. There's some remarkable shots in, in this movie, some beautiful cinematography. Uh, she does a great job with her actors. I like this cast. I think that one thing that Marvel has done really an immaculate job of, sans maybe Brie Larson, is casting their roles. I mean, going back to the first Iron Man, we're like, I, I remember there were rumors about how, like, Nick Cage and Tom Cruise were in the running for the first Iron Man. It's like, can you imagine anybody else playing that role other than Robert Downey Jr.? They've done such a great job with that. And um, here, this is no exception. I think all these actors are well cast. I think all of them give very good, very emotional performances. The biggest thing I give this movie credit for, though, is that it swings for the fences. I mean, it is a big-time swing, and it, it really tries to do something different. In the future, if Marvel wants to sustain itself, they will have to do things that are creative and new because we have seen these stories told many times. And uh, I have flaws with this movie, uh, many flaws, but I can't bring myself to hate it because the attempt is remarkably admirable. But sadly, that does lead me into the things that I don't like about this movie. Being different is not a mark of quality. I, I think I said this when I've talked about Zack Snyder's DC movies in the past, where like, yes, Zack Snyder introduced characters into his universe that were substantially different than what we'd seen in the past. He gave us a Batman that used guns and shot people in the head and murdered them, and that is admittedly bold. Tell me. Do you bleed? But bold does not equate to good. Now, I do not dislike this movie as much as I loathe uh, so much of Zack Snyder's DC Universe, but I do feel like there's kind of some similar parallels there. Eternals is deliberately a much different film than anything Marvel has ever put out. I don't like it. I don't think it's very well executed, and I think there's a lot of problems. I like these performances, like I said. I think they're good, but these characters are flat. And none of them feel like they have much of a personality. One thing that Marvel has done an amazing job of in the past is they've done a great job with their character work. Every character feels like uh, they have their own way of speaking. Every character feels like they have their own vernacular, different personality traits and character quirks. And here, everyone is very, very flatly written. While the actors try to carry it, they can only do so much. Chloe Zhao helped write this movie. And her inexperience as a screenwriter of these kind of films really shines through. There is so much exposition in this movie. And I've talked about this in the past. I think my Artemis Fowl review, which is a long time ago now, but you're welcome to go back and watch that. I talk about that where I understand that exposition in sci-fi and fantasy or a comic book movie like this uh, is a necessity at points. Avengers Endgame, right? Go, you know, let's keep it in the MCU. Did an amazing job of explaining the rules of time travel, but doing it in a way that was very fun, very funny. Marcus McFeely, who were the writers of those movies, did such a great job of uh, not feeling like the film itself was bogged down by its exposition. Here, that is a problem. All the punch-up dialogue and all the humor, for the most part, is almost embarrassing. Outside of Brian Tyree Henry, who I think has a few pretty funny one-liners, there's an entire subplot with Kamel Nanjiani, an actor who I really like, 
his character is doing a documentary, and that subplot is very unfunny. It does not work at all. Now, with that said, I felt this way about the writing in Captain Marvel, and I felt this way about the writing in Shang-Chi, and most people didn't complain about those movies, so maybe this will work for you. Now, one of the big issues with this movie, though, and it's an issue that I figured I would have, and it's why I almost didn't even see this thing, is the bloated runtime. This movie is two hours and 37 minutes, and because of that, I, I can't believe that Kevin Feige greenlit this. I mean, it's such a it's such a lame duck of a movie, and I hate how high the stakes are. This is another we-have-to-save-the-world story. Now, I don't, I'm not opposed to that, but when Marvel did that with Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, that felt really earned. Uh, that was the culmination of 10 years worth of storytelling, which led to this huge universe-altering event. They spent so much time building up to Thanos, building up to the conclusion of the Infinity Saga. Felt very earned. With Eternals, nothing about this feels earned. There are way too many characters in this movie. None of them are super fleshed out. It is fair to say that Marvel has a system. Marvel has had a formula that has worked for a long time. And to some people, that formula, and I, I'm one of those people, that formula has started to wear thin. But at its core, the things that Marvel has done correctly over the last 14 years almost of filmmaking are things that all films should abide by, which is that they get the character stuff right. The first Avengers kind of looks like crap. It's directed by Joss Whedon, who comes from a TV background, and that makes sense because that movie kind of looks like a TV film. And yet, that film is so much more enjoyable to me than something like this, which is beautiful, and it has epic, sweeping cinematography, but it's dull. It's lifeless. It's boring. I know I use that word so often. I've talked about it many times. Character stuff really matters to me, and I think pretty much all the character stuff in this movie falls really flat. I, I think that this movie, while maybe in its earliest days of conception, maybe they had the right idea, but it falls short, and I'm not going to call it a complete miserable failure, but it's not a good film. With that said, before I get to my rating, I like it more than Dune, and I know people are going to hate me for that, and that's fine, but like, while this movie has very banal, very lame character development, there is at least an attempt to develop character where Dune was just such a flatline to me. Like, I, I still can't believe that movie got the kind of reception that it did. They're going to make a part two, and like I said, I'm not going to see it because I don't, I don't want to ruin anybody's fun, but yeah, Eternals, stick into this movie, uh, did not work for me. I, I give Eternals a four out of ten. I don't hate it. It's not the worst Marvel movie. Um, It's in the bottom five, probably. I I like it more than I like Thor The Dark World, and I like it more than I like Captain Marvel, because Captain Marvel wasn't well-directed. Uh, here, like I said, I think there's pieces of this that work, but as a whole, just doesn't do much for me, and, and it's another uh, Marvel disappointment. Please just... Just let Spider-Man be good. That's all I'm asking for. Okay, that'll do it for this review. You can follow me on Twitter at Castellani2014. While you're at it, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get those watch hours up, up, up. We're very, very close to 2,000 subscribers. Let's get there, baby. Come on. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and uh, enjoying my reviews. You guys are the best. Have a great rest of your day. Peace and happiness.